What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media and we are back with another episode of Pokemon X and Y Battle Spot Live 6v6 Edition. Coming into today's episode, we are sitting at a record of 12 and 3 and I'm pretty sure this is episode number 15 so it's kind of weird that coming into the episode we already have a record that adds up to 15 but I think it was the last episode we actually had two forfeits or something so I counted them as victories. I don't really know because I recorded the, that video so long ago. Uh, but I just had a, a, I was trying to get some other stuff recorded, so it ended up being a longer gap than usual. Normally that doesn't happen. Anyway, I'm just going to stop babbling, and uh, we're bringing the same team today. We've got our x which is our special attacker. We've got Stealth Rocking, Taunting, Defensive, Intimidate, Crocodile, which is amazing. I love that set. Then we have uh, Electrode as our special attacker and our offensive pivot. We have a Dragon Dancing for Alligator. Then we have our specially defensive Gardevoir with Will-O-Wisp and Wish and all of those fun things. And then we have uh, Nadia, the defensive Salamence with Intimidate and Dragon Tail, Wish. It's got it's just an amazing set. I really, really enjoy using defensive Salamence so much. It's so good. Ugh. All right, so with that being said, uh, before we get started today, actually, I, before I forget to remind you guys, we haven't done so already and you would like to show some support uh, to the channel and the series and all that good stuff, all you gotta do is click that thumbs up button right below this video. That really does help out a lot and so do comments. So if you wanna share your opinion on something, uh, just make sure you're keeping it positive. There's no reason to insult me or uh, anybody else. Let's just keep it, keep it clean, keep it constructive. And um, if you have suggestions or questions, that would be a great place to um, put them as well. That's what the comment section is for, after all. So let's get into the battle. I should have uh, clicked that while I was babbling about all that stuff because sometimes it takes a while. Oh, apparently not. We have Pablo here who hunts shinies from California. Fantastic. Let's get into it. Charizard Milotic. Glizcor, Gardevoir, Tyranitar, and the... G Did I say Gengar already? I may have said that twice. I do that a lot. Just notice that. I think I want to start off with the Xplout and just Boom Burst everything. I really do. I mean, the Tyranitar could be elite if it's got Stealth Rock, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, the Electrode is not the best lead here because we see the Glizcor and I'm not carrying the HP Ice. If I, if I did have the HP Ice, it'd be great because I'm not choiced. So if he wanted to switch in uh, the Willis score, we could just then go for the HP Ice and take him out, but we can't do that. So Electrode is not uh, as viable, so we're going to wait till that Glitz score goes down, probably to bring in the Electrode. I don't know. We'll see how things go. So uh, the Charizard is there, though. I really want to get him rocks. You know what? We're going to lead off with the Crocodile because we can take on that Tyranitar, too. So that is that. That is that, because really the only thing that wants to take Boom Burst is that Tyranitar. It's the only resist because we have Scrappy, so Gengar is obviously going to get hit by that. So, all right, let's confirm. I actually chose my team somewhat quickly because, yeah, we beat my opponent this time around. Wow, that doesn't usually happen. Normally, there's like two seconds left or less when I choose my Pokemon because I talk forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But that's why you guys like me, right? At least that's what I'm going to keep telling myself. So I don't cry myself to sleep every night. So let's see, why why do we have black screens? Oh my goodness. Sometimes, sometimes it lags so much that I'm really afraid of a DC. And I know it's the beginning of the episode, so it's not that big of a deal. But oh, the Guard of War is going to lead things off. All right. Well, uh, he's going to trace the Intimidate. So there's no reason for us to stay in here because a Moonblast is going to one-shot us. So many Intimidates running around. So many Intimidates. Now, my team really doesn't appreciate the fairy typing. I don't have any resist, and I have two weaknesses, and that is a little bit of a problem. So I, I just, I don't handle fairy types too well. That's just what it is. Now, really the only switch in here I have is my own Gardevoir, and I need to hope that my opponent doesn't have any recovery. Um, because I can't, I can't phase it out with Dragon Tail, because obviously Gardevoir is immune to that. So, I don't know. I don't know. So we're going to have to wait to get rocks up. That was really the only lead Pokemon that was going to deter, blah, 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 that was going to deter rock setting up. So that's a good uh, lead on my opponent's part there. We're going to trace the Gardevoir's Traced Intimidate and Intimidate the Gardevoir. All right. So we have Gardevoir versus Gardevoir action. We see the dazzling gleam over the over the Moonblast slash Hyper Voice, and it gets a crit. Why not? Now we have to go for a wish because of that crit. Uh, we can't just go for a Moonblast because, oh man, please don't have Shadow Ball. Please don't have Shadow Ball. 
It's gonna withdraw, or he. Uh, of course, now, now when I'm actually facing a guy, I wanna call it a she. Really? Really, Joe? Calm down. Why can you never get genders right? Also, why can you never get records or episode numbers right? And why can you not get items right either? When there's items, like, so many times, I cannot even tell you how many times, we see lefties on the screen, or we see life orb, and then I'm like, oh, he's probably choice, uh, he might be a salt vest, probably uh, enigma berry, probably uh, sticky barb, you know, everything under the sun except what it actually is. So, uh, toxic could be a thing here. And I'm a bit afraid of that. So we could potentially pass a wish into something, but I don't want to do that. No. No, no, no. I'm actually going to activate the Marvel skill here by going for the Will-O-Wisp. I want the residual damage on this thing. We see the Scald, which is not going to take us out, and we might actually uh, get a burn here. Yep, there is the burn. That is unfortunate. And the Will-O-Wisp does connect, because that would have been terrible if it didn't. That would just be the worst couple of turns that I've had. Well, actually, no, that would not be the worst couple of turns I've had in a while, because I've had some pretty darn poop turns. Um... If you guys watched the last couple of episodes, uh, the freezes and the crits, the flinch crits, it's been ridiculous. So uh, just getting a burn on a skull is not that haxy at all. I mean, it's a 30% chance. You can't really complain about that. Because if you're going to complain about every time you get burned off of a scald or a lava plume, you're going to be upset a majority of the time that you're playing competitive Pokemon. Let's be real here. Now, I kind of want to set up another wish and then go for Moonblast. So that's what I'm going to do. Get some residual damage on this thing and then hopefully force it to go for recovers if it carries it which it may not actually can we take another with the burn damage can we take another skull i feel like it's going to be close i don't know i don't know um and i kind of want to protect to find out hmm uh, actually no no we're not going to do that we're going to go for a moon blast we're definitely going for a moon blast here I feel like we can take one more. We outspeed because Milotic is not uh, super fast. Base 81 speed. That does more than I figured. And the Mirror Coat is real, ladies and gents. Fantastic play on my opponent's part. I don't know if that was luck or what, but that was a perfect thing to go for. And he's got the Marvel scale up, too. So I don't know that... I'm not confident in coming in with an uninvested Crocodile to finish this thing off. I'm really not. Uh, if anything... I kind of want to just come in with x -Bloud, but are you faster? That is the question. I can't touch you with Feraligator because I'm packing uh, all moves that are not very effective. So we almost have to go into the Electrode here. Almost. We almost have to, because I don't want to take a butt ton of damage with x -Bloud when I don't have to. So... Mm, because that Glizcor can just come in, and I don't really want it coming in for free because that would be just not a fun time. But I, we don't have much of a choice. Gotta do what you gotta do, so we're going into the Electrode here. I should've went for the Protect. But to be fair, I, I really was not seeing that, um, really not seeing that coming. Now, I can go for the HP Grass, because I feel like that'll be enough to take this thing out. I really do, judging by how much Moonblast did from an uninvested Gardevoir. Pretty sure uh, HP Grass will be enough to take this Milotic out from there. And the only reason I'm considering going for it over an Electric-type move is because that Gliscor is there, and it, granted, HP Grass is not going to do a whole lot to a Gliscor, but it will allow it to not come in for free. And that's just something I don't like. I don't like it when things come in for free. So we're going for the HP Grass. He's going to withdraw. I'm guessing the uh, Gliscor is going to come in here. I really wish I had the HP Ice. Yeah, there's the Gliscor. So, like I said, it's not coming in for free, so that's fantastic. Fantastic! And that, uh, that doesn't really do that much, to be honest. Now we can go into Salamence, because I'm guessing... Hmm. What are you running? I don't, I'm, I'm just curious. I'm curious! I'm afraid of the Ice Fang, actually. I'm legitimately afraid of an Ice Fang. Acrobatics. Ooh, that could be scary. That could be really scary. This would be a good time to go into Crocodile and get up rocks, though. Because to get an Intimidate off, and to be fair, though, I can't touch him, really. And if he has Swords Dance, he's just going to set up all over the place. So, no, we're not playing that game. 
I want to at least scout to see what he has before I do something like that. So we're going to go into Salamence. I mean, that would be a high res cop reward type of thing. Not about to play that. Uh, with, not with my luck recently. So out comes Nadia. We're going to see the Intimidate here. No Poison Heal for you. You might have... Oh, actually, I was kind of expecting... I was half expecting you to have the Hyper Cutter. Because, uh, obviously, Poison Heal doesn't do you a whole a lot of good. But it does prevent you from getting uh, toxic. So that is... That is a thing indeed. So I think I want to throw up a wish and then Dragon Tail. I think that's the, the plan of attack here. Yeah, we're going to throw up a wish, see what you're going to do. Then we're going to Dragon Tail you out. Having Rocks up would be the best possible scenario to Dragon Tail, obviously. He's going to stay in. Do you have the HP Ice? We outspeed. So you might not have any investment in your speed. He's going to Toxic. Ugh. Toxic in Glizcore, what a surprise. I don't have any clerics, so I'm not going to be doing much in that regard. But we are going to be able to get a switch into something here. And I want it to be Exploud. Because Boom Burst, or Ice Beam actually is going to deal a crap ton of damage to Glizcore, and it might actually just one-shot it. So we're going into that. We're actually not going to Dragon Tail. Because we don't have Rocks up, and I don't know that he's going to want to switch. He's probably just going to protect. And if he wants to sub, that would be, like, best case scenario. Go for sub, take some of your own HP, and then I can destroy you with Boom Burst afterwards. That would be the best case scenario. Come on, you know you want to be standard Glizcor. You know you want to be a toxic stalling shenanigan person. But, I mean, you're running Mirror Code on Milotic, so I don't know. I feel like you're not going to be that kind of person. I really do. He's going to withdraw. Okay. He doesn't want to stay in. Dragon Tail may have been a good play. The Gardevoir comes out. All right, he's going to trace the Scrappy. That doesn't matter because I don't have any Ghost types. But we're just going to go for a Boom Burst. If it's specially defensive, it's not going to take it out in one hit. And actually, Gardevoir has decent special bulk anyway, so I don't think we're about to one-shot. But we have to get damage on something here. We're not making any headway. We've already lost our special wall. We don't have any switches into Gardevoir. We have to go for damage. Now, depending on what the investment is, Gardevoir is going to outspeed. Because Gardevoir is base 80, I believe. And Exploud is uh, pretty sure slower than that. Pretty sure. We shall see what happens here. But at the very least, we should, uh, barring a crit of some kind, we should be able to get a hit off. Either he wants to stay in with the Gardevoir, or he doesn't like the matchup, and he's going to switch out into some... Oh, he's going to switch out? Okay. What are you switching out into? Was not expecting that. The Tyranitar comes out. Not a bad play. He's going to get the sand up. He should be able to take the Boom Burst fairly well. Not a bad play at all on my opponent's part. But we can go into... Um, what can we go into? Hopefully he doesn't have rocks. Really hoping that. Because... I mean, my team doesn't mind it that much. I guess. But... Still. Still, still. Yeah, we're going into the Crocodile. And... It's unfortunate that we didn't have a Crocodile Tyranitar matchup to lead off the match because I could very easily taunt this thing, prevent the rocks from going up. We do get the Intimidate off though, so that is a plus, and we see the Stealth Rock. All right, fair enough. Fair enough, but the Stealth Rock is going to hurt your team more than mine, so I would actually, I'm actually fine with having Stealth Rock up on my side if it means I get to have it up on my opponent's side. There was a lot of lag there in between turns. I'm guessing a switch out is coming. Do you have Defog on the... Huh, I wonder if you have the Defog on the... Glizcore. I mean, it's illegal with Toxic or Poison Heal or whatever. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. And you have the Charizard, so yeah, we're going to set up the rocks here. He may go into the Charizard here, predicting that. But, I mean, staying in with the Tyranitar, I don't know if that's your your best option because you are intimidated and an EQ is going to be dealing a lot of damage. Probably not going to one-shot you because I'm not invested. And yeah, so we're going to see the withdrawal here. Gardevoir might be coming out. Yeah, Gardevoir, that's not going to take that would not have taken any attacking type move from this thing very well. But with the intimidate and tracing it, again, not a bad play. Not a bad play at all. And now we don't really have any switch-ins unfortunately. So we're going to get rocks up on my opponent's side of the field. And, yeah, actually, you know what? That was a good play. That was a good play because you are going to survive with the Intimidate, and I don't have any switch-ins now that my Gardevoir is dead, so... Not bad. 
Not bad at all. Now, let's see, Electrode, is it worth keeping Electrode around? Huh. I kind of want to go out into Expo, but I really feel like this Gardevoir just outspeeds me. Crocodile and Salamence obviously are not um, Pokemon that I want to have in here. It's, I just have to have something take a really big hit, and I don't like doing that. I don't like having Pokemon take big hits for no reason. We're going to go out into the Electrode. I don't know that we're even going to be able to take that hit, but uh, that could be a mistake. But we got to take damage on something, and I would rather have it be Electrode where we have a chance of living. This Exploud, I mean, it can take a hit, but it's, yeah, it's just not going to really outspeed anything. So having it take all that damage doesn't help us at all. Electrode still outspeeds things, and we survive not by a whole lot. So uh, we see the, the Sandstorm damage. I think I want to Volt Switch here, because I know that that Gliscor can come in. But I'm not afraid of the Gliscor, because he can't Toxic Salamence, so... Uh, we have a switch in there. He can't hit me with EQ. If he wants to sub up, we can go into Exploud. So I'm not afraid, as afraid of that Gliscor now that we know that it's not an offensive set. So I am going to full switch. Going to try to preserve this Electrode for later. Because uh, I think we can live... Ooh, can we live rocks? I think we can. I think we can survive rocks. Pretty sure. Um, if the Gliscor comes in here and we can't switch out and we have to take more sand damage, I don't think we will survive rocks again so at that point we're just going to go for HP grass in case he wants to set up a sub or whatever it may be just get baby damage off and Electrode will go down he's going to stay in so yeah all right he's probably going to just kill me off so we're going to take big damage on something else that has to be specially defensive that didn't take any damage whatsoever no damage question is, what do we go into to take this incoming hit? I don't know if Salamence can take it. Uh, I mean, that'll give us a free switch into Exploud. But then the Tyranitar can come in. This is not looking good for us. Not looking good at all. I want to keep Feraligatr around for that Charizard. Um, because Aqua Jet will one-shot it. Aqua Jet will do a lot of damage to Gliscor as well. So, I don't want to sacrifice for Alligator here. Exploud really does a number on my opponent's team, so it's looking like Nadia here is the weak link and something that we don't need nearly as much as everything else. So, we're going to have to take a Dazzling Gleam here, and I'm pretty sure we're just going to die to it. We get an Intimidate off. That is useless. Doesn't mean anything. And there's a Dazzling Gleam. Yeah, that is a dead Salamence. Goodbye, Nadia. Goodbye. We're going to see the Gardevoir take more Sandstorm damage. Oh no, it subsides. All right, never mind. Never mind. Now the question is, do we go into the Electrode for another T-Bolt? Because that's, I mean, that's not going to do anything. Let's be real here. It's not going to be enough. I feel like we can take a hit and set up a Dragon Dance and then Waterfall this thing. The, I mean, if, it's, if it is speed invested, though, if it is speed invested... It outspeeds for Alligator to begin with. You know what? I, I, I'm going to say, judging by that damage that we saw from Electro, that it's specially defensive. So I'm going into for Alligator here on a little bit of a whim. A little bit of a whim because we're going to outspeed just about everything on his team with the Dragon Dance. Try to think. Does he have anything that can just come in and poop on this for Alligator? He's got the Milotic, which is burned. It's going to take rocks damage. We can outspeed it and hit it with a anything. He could have the Willow here. So he may predict me to Dragon Dance. I'm a little bit afraid of that, so I want a Waterfall. Oh, he outspeeds. All right, he has Speed Investment. That is a dead for Alligator. Oh, we survived with 10 HP. Oh, my goodness. So, he, so that Gardevoir took that Thunderbolt that well? Uninvested? That's crazy. So I, I apparently just don't have any idea what Gardevoir's bulk is like. That's ridiculous. Uh, the Gengar is going to come out now. And he's going to take rocks damage. And now we don't have Feraligator. We don't have an option for Feraligator. We can't get rocks um, off our side of the field. So Feraligator is as good as dead. So at this point, uh, we're just going to Aqua Jet for damage. 
pretty much the only thing we can do. I mean, it should be pretty obvious, but that's just what it is. That does an okay amount. We see the Shadow Ball there, so I guess switching in x could have been a thing, but then for Alligator would have just been fodder and nothing else. We do have Electro that outspeeds, though. But if we switch it in, it has to stay in. And I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that because... Yeah, that's that's trouble. It is definitely trouble. And this is where having Crunch on Crocodile would come into play. But we don't have that. But Electro doesn't do anything to Glizcor, so we're going to go in with the Electro here. The play to make would be for him to switch in the Glizcor now. And I, I pretty much have to go for a T-Bolt here. It's really uh, nothing I can do. I, I have to go for it. He could switch in the T-Tar, which would take a special hit fairly well in the sand as well. Which we'll see. We'll see what happens. We're not looking so good though. It's it's five to three. Granted, he has a lot of Pokemon that are weakened. But we've only knocked out the Gardevoir. And Electrode is about to go down. So if we have it be a 5 to 2, I really don't think we're going to come back from that. Because we don't have any sweepers. We just have Exploud. Exploud would have to kill everything. If we had Sticky Web up, that would be a different story. Uh, he's going to stay in and let this Gengar go down. I don't agree with that play. I don't agree with that play at all. I mean, he can come in with something and revenge me here. But I just, I don't think that, that was, don't think that that was a good play. There's no reason for me to go for Volt Switch, uh, unless he was predicting me to predict the Gliz Core and go for the HP Grass, which would be not very effective on Gengar and not kill. But at this point, I mean, I was pretty much backed into a corner. I had to go for the safe play. It's just what it is. So the Gliz Core is going to come out now, take Rock's damage. We have to go for HP Grass. There's no reason to switch out with Rock's up, so Hidden Power Grass it is. Hidden Power Grass it is, and we'll see uh, what he wants to go for. I'm guessing EQ. I mean, Toxic would just be silly. I mean, it would get the job done, but it has 90% accuracy, so I don't see why you would go for that. He goes for the Protect. Why? To scout what I'm going to do? I mean, maybe? I, I don't know. What is the point of that? It's not like you're getting any recovery from Lefties or uh, Poison Heal. But okay, fair enough. You want to go for that? Sure. Sure thing, we can go for the HP Grass here. And we are about 20 minutes, 19 minutes into this battle, something like that. And we are about to be down four to two. I'm not looking forward to that. We don't have any recovery left on our team, so running through the rest of my opponent's team does not seem likely at this point. Really doesn't. He does have some weakened Pokemon, so that is good to know. He's gonna go for the Roost. Why? Why? <laughs> Why don't you just kill me off? I mean, he, granted, he's going to be just about where he was before. I oh, know he's not. No, he's not. That was a good play. That was a good play. Because he knows I can't do much to him, so he might as well be at as much HP as possible. So, yeah, go for the HP Grass again. And he should kill us off this turn, I'm guessing. And we saw the HP Grass doesn't do that much. No Protect, so that's good. That is good. Yeah, that doesn't do anything at all. There's the EQ. Good play on my opponent's part. And yeah, so the question is, do we get an Intimidate off or do we just go in and try to start uh, destroying things with Boom Burst? So I'm thinking Boom Burst is just the way to go here. Because we don't have any recovery. We're going into the X-Cloud. Going into the x -Bloud and we're going to Boom Burst things. I don't think EQ will kill. Uh, he might go into the Tyranitar, which is a little bit worrisome, because they don't have the Focus Blast. So I kind of want to go for Surf, but I don't outspeed. So Boom Burst it is. Oh, we do outspeed. I should have went for the Ice Beam. Why am I outspeeding? Okay, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter, but... Oh, he was not invested in speed. I mean, obviously, it's a Gliscor. Interesting, okay. Never mind, I just derped a little bit there, but Gliscor goes down, so that's great. We have the Titar and the Charizard and the Milotic remaining. Three on two. Tyranitar is going to come out. And he cannot touch my, um, my Crocodile, really. 
Crunch, not very effective. Um, EQ is not going to do much after you're intimidated. We have a shot. We have a legitimate shot after being down as far as we were. We have a shot here. That Charizard is still a problem. Even with Rocks up, it still is a problem. And I think that might win him the match, actually. Because Flamethrower slash Fire Blast, I think, is going to take out Exploit after more Rocks. Pretty sure. And we can't even crunch it or anything. We have to not. We have to go for a knockoff, which does nothing. Why am I carrying knockoff on a Pokemon um, when we, there's an itemless meta? Oh, I should have changed it to Crunch. Should have changed it to Crunch. My opponent's taking some time thinking about his moves. And we are going to go into the Krugadal here, get an Intimidate off. And uh, maybe we'll see Stone Edge. I don't know. We take a little bit of baby damage from the rocks. There's the Intimidate. And yeah, he's not going to be doing much with... Oh, he goes with a Brick Break. Good play. Why are you carrying Brick Break on Tyranitar? I don't know, but it's working out in this situation, so I can't knock it. Cannot believe some of the moves that this guy is carrying. Um, but it's just pooping on my team, so it's working out for him. Ladies and gents, it is working out for him. EQ is the only play to go for here. Oh man, I'm feeling the loss because of the Charizard. I really am. Hmm. He's going to withdraw. Are you going to predict the EQ and go into the Charizard? You are. Okay. Fair enough. He takes all kinds of damage. All kinds of damage. Uh, he's going to get hurt by the Sandstorm. We don't outspeed with anything. So switching out makes no sense. We have to go for knockoff. As sad as that is, we have to go for knockoff. Oh my god, I cannot believe that having knockoff is going to lose me this match. Oh wait, you're going for Dragon Claw. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? No, don't do that. He's going to go down to the next turn of Sandstorm. Why did you do that? I'm so confused. I'm, um, I'm flabbergasted. He wasted this Charizard. We can survive another one. We outspeed Titar. I'm just... I'm, I'm just so confused. I am so confused. We outspeed Titar with the X-Cloud. We outspeed, I think, the Milotic, too. So, actually, why don't we go into the X-Cloud now? Unless he goes for Flare Blitz. And just kills me, in which case, that would be the worst possible thing. Let's go into the X-Plot. I'm just, I'm confused. Does anybody know what's going on? This is obviously your Charizard X, but why are you, I, just, I don't know. I need to stop. Stop. Let's just focus on potentially winning this match because I would be very excited. We see the Dragon Claw again, and that doesn't do as much as he needs it to. And the Sandstorm is going to finish off the Charizard, so big threat that I was worried about is gone. I'm happy I didn't defog. I'm really happy I didn't defog. What are you going to go out to now? You've got Milotic and Gliscor. We see the Milotic coming out. Okay. Now, I'm pretty sure you're not invested in speed. If you are, I think we lose because then you'll outspeed Crocodile. Hmm, this is tough. This is really tough. But we have no play but to go for Boom Burst. We outspeed the Milotic. He's defensive. The Milotic's going down. I think we just won this match. I think we came back because... Oh. <laughs> I don't even know what to say, ladies and gents. I feel like my opponent had this match. And I don't know if he's just not bringing a competitive team or what. I mean, it, it seemed fairly competitive to me. Maybe I just played badly if he's a non-competitive player, but I thought he did pretty well. I mean, up until this last couple turns, I thought he did very well, in fact. Uh, let's go for a Surf. It's super effective. It's not going to do enough to KO Tyranitar in the sand with a special defense uh, raise or advantage or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, wow, this is crazy. This is crazy. I'm pumped about this. So this is going to bring our record to... Uh, well, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say anything because this match is not over yet. This is not over yet for sure. I'm pretty sure that we're going to win, but I'm not positive. So I don't want to say anything. We are going to get the Intimidate off on the uh, when, 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 when Crocodile comes in. 
Because he's going to Brick Break here. He's taking his time thinking about his move. Maybe he's uh, calculating things. I don't know. But wait, did he outspeed? Did he outspeed Crooked Elf? He did. I think we lost, actually. Because he's not going to go down to that. He goes for the Brick Break. That's a dead exploit. Actually, we may not win this. We may not win this. Oh, this is close. This is a nail biter. Get the Intimidate off. We have to take Rocks damage. Can we survive a Brick Break? That is the question here. That is the only thing that matters. Can we survive a Brick Break? And did Tyranitar outspeed? I mean, I'm base 95, aren't I? Why would Tyranitar ever outspeed? I don't know. So many things are going through my head right now that I'm not even thinking straight, so I'm probably saying a whole bunch of things that are incorrect. I'm just going to go for the EQ. That's the only play. We only have less than three minutes left on the timer, so this went the distance, pretty much. And... Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know what to say, ladies and gents. I hope you guys enjoyed this battle, regardless of how this ends. I, I know I enjoyed it. Very back and forth. Uh, not really. Not really. My opponent held the momentum the majority of the match and kind of just fell apart here at the end. He can still come away with the victory. I guess it's still possible. But, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. He's taking a long time thinking about his moves, really drawing this out. And we do outspeed, so I'm, I'm not just... I'm not, I was trying to think, like, how in the world could Tyranitar have outsped? We get a crit. That is meaningless. Tyranitar is not living in EQ. Really just don't think that's happening. And, yeah. So that is going to be a victory for us after uh, falling behind. What were we down? 5-2 to two or 5-3? to three? I don't know. We were in quite a hole, and we were able to make the comeback, albeit with some, some help from our opponents. Not a lot, but we, we did have some help. So, still... Still a lot of fun, still a great match. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That brings our record to 13 and 3 for the series. Next time around, we're going to be changing our team up. I'll bring all new Pokemon, including replacing Nadia, finally, because she's been in six straight episodes. So we are, yeah, going to replace her. And we'll bring her back in like a Wi Fi battle or something. I don't know. Uh, with that being said, that is it for this episode. And I will see you all for the next one. But until then, game on.